Hi guys, it's been a while since we posted a video, so I thought I'd do a bit of a dynamic illusion for you today using two decks of cards. Now on the video it's going to be filmed in two parts. The first part is going to be the presentation. Now because as usual I don't have anyone here to help me, uh, I'm going to play the part of the performer and the spectator. The second part of this video will be the tutorial, so I will show you how this trick is done. All that I will ask you is, I know that everyone watching this video are going to be magicians. If I can ask you just to watch the performance part through the eyes of a spectator. In other words, see it how they would see the trick, the effect, the presentation. Without further ado, let's get on to mirror image. So the performance. Uh, here you can see I've got two packs of playing cards. One blue, one red. Choose any pack you like. Blue, okay, we'll take the blue. We'll just get rid of the red deck to there. And I'm going to remove the cards. The box is empty. Now the cards are just regular cards. And we can even give them a shuffle if you like, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to get you to choose a card uh, at random. Just call stop whenever you get the urge. Stop. Just remember that card. Yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do, the five of hearts, let's get you to sign your name across the front. Yeah. So just sign your name across here. So I'm just going to sign the card. Okay, there it is there. So you've signed the face of the five of hearts. Okay, that was an absolute free choice. Yeah. Now, out of all of the 52 cards, you could have had any, but you went for this one, the Five of Hearts. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put that just down on the table. We'll even put the pen over the top. Because what I want to do is give you half these cards, and I want you to look through to make sure that there's no duplicate Five of Hearts in there. Have a very close look at that, that there's no duplicate Five of Hearts. Happy with that? We'll square those up, and what I'm going to do is to take your card and drop it face down on there. Now I want you to do the same with these ones. Have a look along here to see if there's any duplicate five of hearts. Okay? No? We'll square those up and drop those on there. Square them up. Now remember these red cards that we had earlier on that you didn't want? We're going to bring them into play now. In fact, what I'm going to do is just to... Empty them out. The box is empty. Uh, they are exactly the same as the blue deck, except they have, surprisingly, red backs. Okay, they are just a, a regular deck of cards, 52 cards, all with red backs. Now, at the, this point in time, square those up, we've got two decks of cards, 52 red backs, with the faces upwards. 51 cards with blue backs facing up, and one face down right in the middle. What I'm going to do magically is to replicate this to this. It sounds impossible, but watch. And it's done. Most people don't believe it's happened, but if we have a look, we know that in the middle here is one card and one card only, face down. The red deck we've just removed from here, look at that, right there in exactly the same position, face down, halfway through, is one card. Pretty amazing stuff. But as a magician, I want to go one stage further, you see, because wouldn't it be amazing if that one card that replicated by flipping face down actually turned out to be the card that you chose, the five of hearts? And it's a perfect match. Isn't that amazing? Remember you did have a free choice of any card in the pack. Now at this point, most magicians would do a transposition. They would transpose the card that you chose from here into here, invisibly. I want to go the extra mile. I want to do something special. Instead of transferring the blue card from here to here, I'm going to take just a part of it. Your signature, that's unique. Watch, I'm going to pluck 
and into there. Now impossible as it seems, you did check to make sure there was no duplicate five of hearts. There was just one in there. Your card that you signed, the signature has gone. Remember this pack here? We know that the five of hearts is there. Could it possibly be that the signature from this blue pack has ended up here? Oh, look at that. That's incredible. Yeah. Is that your signature? Yeah. It's on the red backed pack as opposed to the one that you originally signed, the blue back. Well, I hope you enjoyed that routine and it's given you some inspiration and some ideas of how you can create this kind of jumping signature type effect. It's always been a favourite of mine where you can get someone to sign a card, a blue backed card, and their signature appears on a red backed card. Now, there has been many variations over the years and I hope the one I've just performed for you has given you some uh, ideas of how you can change it and adapt it to suit your own presentation style. Remember, if any of you come up with a way of doing this without palming, then let me know because I hate palming cards. I'm going to run through very quickly. I'm sure that as magicians, you already sussed out how the performance worked. So I'm not going to go in depth of any of the moves. I'm just going to go through the routine very briefly and what to look out for in the order that you present it in. You require two decks of cards, one blue, one red. They're totally unfaked. There is a bit of preparation. First of all, if you take a look at the playing cards, uh, in the old type of bicycle boxes, they used to put a picture of the playing card on the reverse of the box. They don't tend to do that so much nowadays. If you've got these more modern type boxes, then you may want to stick a playing card on here and just cut the half moon out at the top, because you are going to drop a playing card on top of the box later on. So that's the best thing to do there. Let's just take a look at the cards and the preparation that you need to do with the two regular decks. The red cards, you take a card out, for example, the three of spades. Now, as you probably gathered, you force this. You also need to remove the identical card, the three of spades, in the blue deck. And the only preparation you've got to do is to put the red back card on top of the blue backed one, just on there, on the face of the pack. These can then be put in the box. The whole setup is now done. Now one thing I will say is when you put the red pack in, have the flap at the top and these go in face down. And it'll make a part of the trick later much easier. You're all done. So very quickly through the performance, what I did was to offer them either box. Now you probably recognize that we did Magician's Force there because you've got to use the blue ones. So whichever one they choose, you're going to put this to one side. If they choose a blue, you say I use these. If they choose red, you'll say we'll use those later on. And I just put those to one side. I put them on the right hand side with the playing card back uppermost. Now I've put it on the right because when I palm a card in here, I'm going to put it on top there. If you're left-handed, then you might want to put it over here. But over there, you then remove the cards. And if you watch the performance, you'll see exactly the order I did this. You tip the cards out, the box is empty. I always leave the box on the playing field as a distraction. The cards can be shown. Just don't show the bottom card because that is the red card but just show the cards. You can show the faces as well. I do use my fingers here to cover this a little bit. Once you've done that, you need to force that card. I use the slip cut force. If you've got a better one, then choose that. Once I've done that and I show them the card that they've apparently stopped at, I then said, I tell you what, we'll sign it. I flip both packets over 
and drop this on. I grab the pen and give it to them. As you peel this off, you're going to tilt the cards towards yourself to hide this. And I just put this card down. This is the red-backed one. You put this down, and the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want them to write their name across the whole card. I want to keep one part free. By me on the pretense of holding the card, they've only got that part to sign. They then sign along here. So they've now signed the card. You're holding it like that. You then bring this back on top of the pack. Again, just timing is everything. Just put that on top of the other genuine blue back one as you put that on there. You then do a double lift and then I just turn it over to show the card and I put it on there. I've got two cards as one here. I put it on here. When you push this off, you don't want to reveal the red card they've just signed. You want to push this off, so I tilt it up as I pull this off. Now I'm going to pull the card off like that. Quite a natural move. Just pull the card off. Yeah. Now because they sign one end of it, you don't want to make a big deal of this. You're not going to pull this off and say, look, there's your card. What you're going to do is just say, I'm going to put your card down here. Now what they've seen is just a quick flash of this. It's a great way of convincing them it's their card. Why wouldn't it be? You haven't done anything at the moment. Yeah. So let me just do that again. You pull this off, as you say, but just put your card down here. It's a split second that you show that card. Just a split second. You don't make a big deal of it. Yeah. There it is there. It's a subconscious way of getting them to recognise it's their card. I then put the pen on there. The next part, you're in the right position, you just change hands and you're going to give them half the cards. In fact, you're going to spread them. You spread these and you say, I want you to look for, make sure there's no duplicates there. In the meantime, as soon as you do that, you've got to palm this red card. Now, as most of you have probably seen on the performance, I'm the world's worst palmer of cards. I can't do it. I couldn't do it back in 1970 when I started Magic, and I can't do it now. So I do it very badly. But you're going to palm this card. Okay, like that. They've now finished looking. Now you do this while they're looking at those. You then square the cards up, and then you say, I'm going to take your card and put it face down. You then spread these cards. I've got the palmed card here, and I use this to gesture. Look, check there's no duplicates in there. And then as I gather these cards up, I'm just going to move. Now look what happens. I'm going to drop this card on here as I move the box. Now look at that. It's almost hidden. Now, it's not a big deal, the fact that I've got the card dropped on there, even if it wasn't on there perfect, because it looks as though you're just moving the pack out of the way as you gather these cards up. So I've moved it out of the way, but they're still concentrating on what's happening here. Don't put a neon sign to say, look at these. Yeah, My arm's in the way, I'm doing gesturing, I've gathered the cards up, and I just drop them. On there. I'm almost hiding this with my arm. That part's done. You then grab these and say, remember these red cards. Now what I'm doing, I'm just putting pressure on the card with my finger and I'm gripping the sides and the back so it keeps it in place. And it's a great illusion. Say so you didn't want these cards earlier on that we put to one side or these are the cards that you chose earlier the red cards, and you can handle it quite freely. Look at that. So your hands are empty. Now this is why we put the cards in the box as we did, because you will hold the cards like this. There is this. You're going to basically slide that out. And it would be the reverse 
way of the rest of the pack. Look at this. As I pull the flap open, pull the cards out, what I'm doing is I'm pulling the bottom card as well. Perfect. You can show the box is empty. Now at the bottom is the signed card reversed. You then show that they are just a regular red deck of cards and then cut the cards casually as you turn them over. Now when you turn these over, at the moment the signature is up this end. Yeah, let me just show you that. It's at that end. I actually want it to be at the other end. So what I do is I don't turn the cards side on. I flip them over. That's now put the signature at this end. The trick's done. The rest of it, if you watch the performance, is just a build-up. You spread the cards. They can see that one card is there. And I just move it to one side. Same here. Now that's a great coincidence that the cards are now replicated. I then just square these up and turn over to show their, their chosen card. And when I square these up and turn them over, it sees a three. So they now get the double whammy of the card flipping and there. I don't leave this for too long. I quickly just squeeze them up because I don't want to think about the signature at that point. You then do the plucking of the signature from there. They believe it's on the blue card in here. And I turn this over, you might want to do it a different way. And when I remove the card, the signature is gone. That gives a great wow factor. And then when you spread these, and this is the kicker, is the signature is on there. If you watch the video back, I'm sure you'll get the ideas and maybe improve on that yourself.